Sometimes we don't have time to have breakfast at home. So I wanted to show you guys a few recipes, a few ideas that I had that you can take with you that are healthy, easy to make, and just simply wholesome. And these are also good for my gluten intolerant friends since all of these recipes are gluten free as well. So let's get started. Powered by leaves. First, we're gonna make amaranth and berry parfait. For this, you need half a cup of fresh or frozen berries of your choice, half a cup of plant-based yogurt, and one cup of popped amaranth, and a tablespoon of sweetener. I'm using maple syrup here. Into a bowl, we are gonna add our popped amaranth. You can buy amaranth pre-popped or you can pop it yourself. It's very easy. All you need to do is dry heat the amaranth in a pan with the lid on top for two to three minutes and it will be popped. Then we're gonna add the yogurt. I'm using Alpro Soy yogurt. This will make it creamy and complement the slightly nutty flavor of the amaranth. Amaranth is an ancient grain and is known to be a staple in Aztec civilizations. One cup of amaranth contains 29% of your recommended daily intake of iron. Plus, it is really rich in manganese, phosphorus, and magnesium as well. Not to mention, the phytochemical composition of amaranth has shown to have an anti-inflammatory effect on the body by significantly decreasing pro-inflammatory cytokines. These are just a few examples of the compounds found in amaranth and more and more studies are coming out with the anti-inflammatory effect. I'm then adding the maple syrup and giving that a good stir. It will become a porridge-like consistency. Into a glass, I'm adding the berries and layering that with the amaranth mixture. I just love how this layering looks. It also gives a really nice contrast between the flavors. This breakfast is not only delicious, but it's packed with antioxidants and nutrients. And of course, you can try different flavor combinations and fruit to try with it. It's something I've discovered very recently and I love it. It's something you can easily take with you. Just add it to a mason jar and you can have it on the go as a breakfast or as a snack. Next, we're gonna make this delicious chocolate cherry chia oats. For this, you need half a cup of oats, half a cup of oat milk, one and a half tablespoons of chia seeds, half a cup of fresh or jarred cherries, and some dark chocolate chards. Into a bowl, I'm adding in the oats with the milk, chia seeds, and one tablespoon of nut butter. I'm using peanut butter here. Then I'm adding a tablespoon of maple syrup and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You just want to make sure that everything is well combined and creamy. Then into a glass or mason jar, I'm adding the oat chia mixture and layering it with the cherries, just like we did with the amaranth. You can use fresh or stewed cherries for this, but I use jarred cherries because they are the easiest to use. And I've topped that off with some shards of dark chocolate. How pretty does this look? It tastes and looks like dessert, but it's made from good for you ingredients like chia and oats. Chia seeds and oats have something in common. They're really rich sources of soluble and insoluble fiber. So once it reaches your stomach, it's gonna absorb a lot of water and it's gonna keep you full for a long time. Plus, it will also reduce any kind of blood sugar spikes that you will have, just to ensure that you are comfortable and not hungry or craving anything until afternoon. So it's really good as a breakfast. And like the amaranth breakfast, you can prepare this overnight. This only makes it more delicious. And you can also pack it in a mason jar so you can take with you wherever you go. The last breakfast idea, you are gonna love it, is a buckwheat banana walnut muffin. Compared to other grains and seeds, the minerals found in buckwheat is better absorbed. This is because it's relatively low in a compound called phytic acid, a common inhibitor of mineral absorption such as iron. Buckwheat is the richest food source for a compound called d inositol Studies indicate that this compound makes you more sensitive to insulin, thereby lowering blood sugar spikes. This is of particular interest with people with diabetes or polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS. To make this muffin, we need one ripe banana, eight walnuts, a pinch of salt, half a cup or 100 grams of buckwheat flour, two tablespoons of nut butter, and some baking powder. First, I'm adding the banana into a bowl, and then we're gonna smash that into a paste using a fork. The riper the banana, the, the less sweetener you need to use, so this is a good way to use overripe bananas. Then I'm adding a tablespoon of flaxseed. You don't have to add it if you don't have any, it's just to add more nutrition to this meal. 
Then I'm adding two tablespoons of sweetener, you can use whichever you like, and two tablespoons of pure nut butter. I'm using peanut butter again. I'm gonna give that a quick mix just to make sure everything is well blended, and then we can add in our buckwheat flour, walnuts, and a pinch of salt. I also like to add half a teaspoon of cinnamon powder for some extra flavor. Then in goes quarter teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of baking powder. Then add half a cup of plant milk and stir that well. The consistency should be thick and look something like this and a little bit stringy as well. Add two tablespoons each of this mixture into a greased muffin tray. I also like to add a small piece of dark chocolate on top. This goes into a preheated oven for 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit for 30 to 35 minutes. Then you can take it out of the oven and it should have a slightly browned top like this. These muffins are really moist and fluffy and I really like to take them with me as a snack or for breakfast. They're not sweet like cupcakes, rather they are mildly sweet with a nice flavor and crunch from the walnuts and banana. Unlike other muffins, these are made from whole food ingredients with lots of fiber and healthy fats. That's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and stick around. Lots more videos like this is coming up. Until next time.